Good morning, folks. The sun is entering more of a fighting stance the last 24 hours. Nobody's swinging yet, just saying. We've got the top articles in the journals and some blast from the past relevant to the near-term future. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star with no major flashes of flares or ejections of plasma. Coronal holes confined to higher latitudes as well, but as we switch to 304 angstroms, we can see that coronal activity is building. Plasma filaments are lifting and snapping. A couple thin, snake-like ropes are facing Earth on the south as well. Now let's take a closer look at the incoming limb and the departing. Slow CME heading off the far side behind the limb there. These bright active regions actually only have a few sunspots and they are small and undeveloped without penumbral surroundings. The departing limb is quite a bit more active despite not really releasing interplanetary shocks at this stage. You can see those thin filaments facing Earth too atop the boiling surface. Quick check on geomagnetic conditions find solar wind generally at lower intensity this morning and from a slow decline leaving Earth's magnetic field very calm today. Let's make our only science stop outside the Earth here for a continuation of the problems of modeling the inside of a star. Solar composition problem. The solar abundance problem. It's a lot like Newton's gravity equation. Excellent descriptor of observable reality. Fails at the most critical scales. That's pretty much mainstream science on the solar dynamo right now. On to more pressing and more easily understood science. Campy Flegri, which is unquestionably my number one concern volcano heading into the coming years, is showing 2 to 5 centimeters of uplift per year at the expected eruption zone. Over the four year study, that's 8 to 20 centimeters in the various locations, helping to solidify its building phase continues and that we may soon be able to pick out where the uplift is on runaway compared to the surroundings. Up next, this is one where the words hit your ear differently at first than they should. Is Earth's crust operating at a critical point? Sounds scary. But they're actually discussing whether or not seismic events are entirely random and independent. If so, each event would follow criticality and be utterly unpredictable. Observers know better. By the way, the third author on the paper used to work for NASA. If any of you remember when that team from NASA and ETH Zurich declared the electromagnetic precursor model was the best way to predict quakes, he was on NASA's side of the team. And by the way, Paper confirms today they are not at a critical point and they are predictable. Folks, we are in the midst of the AGU fall meeting. It's where tons of the most important science comes out every single year. And just like last year, we're seeing a considerable respect paid to solar climate forcing and atmospheric electricity that was absent in years prior. A couple of them, very excited for them to post, but while I wait, I went back and found that talk that about 60 or 70 of you have asked about. The one where they first announced the discovery that the seven-year cycle of length of day changes, slight glitches in Earth's rotation, literally, occurred due to geomagnetic jerks from Earth's core. Before the atmospheric patterns controlled most of what they saw outside of the random solar storm rotation glitches, and that was about ten years ago this week we learned our core can jerk the crust as well. Hard to even quantify the importance of this topic. As Earth is slogging deeper into the ongoing magnetic excursion, the planet is set to have rapid changes and many of them are already underway. This here is also from the AGU, but just from this past summer. It shows the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion event over 40,000 years ago. Most places in the world saw 80-90% to 90 drops in magnetic protection compared to normal quiet field shielding. That answers another one of your most common questions. We greatly appreciate your support. Our electromagnetic earthquake prediction resides at quakewatch.net. Spaceweathernews.com is your one-stop shop for solar data. Our store closes at the end of the week for the holiday. Speaking of shopping, get those orders in now, especially those children's books. That's at otf.cells.com. We've got faster wind maps and shots of our star to close. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you